When I pass through the gates of my workplace, nature greets me. This not only makes my mindset for work, but also makes the workplace feel a lot like home. These are some of the ways the players in the real estate sector are incorporating greenery into their living spaces. But with the sector competing with the environment, how are urban planners aligning with the current trends and principles in the field? This is our center of discussion tonight on Area Code with me, Sabrina. In the realm of urban development, the real estate sector stands as a pivotal force, not only shaping skylines, but also influencing the environmental footprint of our cities. In recent years, a significant paradigm shift has occurred within this sector as developers, investors and policymakers increasingly prioritize sustainability and environmental consciousness. Today, I'm joined by Godwin to have this discussion. Joining us on the show today, I'm very pleased to welcome back Godwin, who is a design and building engineer. Welcome back to the show, Godwin. Thank you, Sabrina. Yes. So today we're going to be talking about sustainability and how it pertains to urban planning and real estate in general. But before we even get into it, mm -hmm. let's talk about greenery. How important is greenery to you as an individual? Yeah, greenery is very important. I do really appreciate what you have here. Uh, you see, if, when we are putting up infrastructure, mm. building infrastructure for people, uh, we consider city things and they are all envisioned towards comfort. And that's visual comfort, thermal comfort and acoustic comfort. To give it to you briefly, acoustics about to the noise, the yeah. sounds you hear. Mm. And that's why you see when we are designing theatres, even churches, there should be a way we design them, even some factories. Uh, yeah, that's about to the noise because God created that our ears in a way that there is a certain amount of sound you have to receive. Mm -hmm. So when we are designing, we consider the noise from the traffic and others, that's the acoustics. And then the visual is what you see by, in terms of glares and the others. But the most important among the three is the thermal comfort, how you feel when you are in a space. And given that we are going sustainable, we are trying to limit the use of solar, I mean uh, AC in buildings. So having an environment like this is really great. Yes. Then another thing that greenery plays uh, a, a role, uh, you see, I've already said that, in, you see that like Nakasero Hill. If Nakasero Hill was too much green, Nakasero Mango and the surrounding hills, if they had green cover, then the amount of rain, rain water that reaches or wind and uh, the lower areas, then it would, the, the, the soil takes down most of the water. Mm. Then what is, what goes down slope through surface runoff is limited. So doing green is really very important and yes. we highly encourage it. Okay. And it's a concept that is important for home owners as well as the general urban setups. Having well-planned cities with enough greenery is, is the way of reducing floods. Right. Yeah, so yes. having nature is that good. Mm. Yes. And I, I'm glad that you've said that because that's the conversation we're having today. Mm -hmm. Urban planning. Can you please break it, break it down for us in the latest man's terms possible? Uh, no, urban planning, um, is a bit wide, but it's mostly how we live in the cities and the metropolitan areas mm. in an organized way. It's a bit broad, but to summarize it, we don't have urban planning in villages, so normally in cities and the metropolitan areas, but now they should be organized in ways we have approaches. Uh, I can break them briefly. And one of the most important ones is strategic urban planning. Mm -hmm. Uh, where the readers come up with the legislation sometimes that this area is industrial area, this area is residential, this one is commercial, and they are gazetted in certain ways. 
such that you don't find the, a mosque next to a bar, then next to a school. Yes. There should be that. So that's strategic. Uh, it, it's, it's done everywhere. Then uh, another type of or approach to urban planning is the master planning. I know master planning, you plan for an area which is on, not yet built up. Um, like we have had like a temangalo. It was going to be a huge project, but it, ha it was master planned. So master planning, you have uh, an empty canvas mm -hmm. and you plan for, for infrastructure there. Uh, then there is also economic urban planning, where you have um, an area, uh, like for example, if, like a decade plus ago, Chisenyu was a slum. But it, through economic urban planning, they are building morals around Chisenyu to, to change it. Uh, sometimes through economic urban planning, uh, recently I saw the president launching an industrial park in, in was it Timbari? Mm. Yeah, so through that you find that in, uh, now the settlement pattern of people changes. Then you find the, it's the urban planning, but it has that background of organization. Mm. And then there's also revitalization, where you find a place like a Ginger, <coughs> was the ones booming and the industrial, but uh, people are saying it should be revitalized, and that's also urban planning. Uh, yeah, you get resources and you you channel them somewhere, so that because you don't want everything in Kampala or everything in Iruwero, mm. so you have to balance it by bringing up that this is an agricultural area, this is an industrial area, something like that. Okay. There are others, but those are the main. All right. And how uh, how are engineers and, and urban planners integrating um, environmentally friendly plans into the designs? Actually, uh, people might not realize mm -hmm. that construction is the biggest uh, element with a negative impact on the environment. Construction itself, we are, uh, when we are building houses and the roads. Uh, so uh, we came up, people have come up with ways to make sure that these buildings don't impact the environment negatively. Uh, and it's what we are trying to call sustainable real estate, mm. or some people call it green real estate. So one of the approaches, actually, before I go to the approaches, uh, a build, the reason construction impacts the environment is because a building impacts the environment in three phases. Before it is constructed, during its lifetime, and even when it is done, and it needs to be demolished still. You, and uh, to add on that, the biggest land fields in the world, they are from construction waste. Right. So now the approach is to minimize that, that instead of, for example, instead of building a uh, building, then after, I'm seeing in town buildings, which we are done like uh, in the 1930s, 1940s, they are being put down. And that's the pollution, of course. Pollution in the sense that you need the material to put in new ones. So now, one approach we use is we give buildings a longer lifespan when we are doing the design, such that even after 100 years, it is still there, it can be used. Even when it was maybe initially meant to be a hotel, after 50 years, it can be turned into an apartment block. Yeah, that's a design and engineering approach we use. Then another one, um, when we are designing, there is something we are calling mixed use. We no longer say this is a mall or this is a supermarket. We make sure you have a commercial, like a mall supermarkets and others, or maybe like on the lower floors. Then in the middle you have corporate offices, then up you can have apartments. Uh, that one helps in two ways, that you are, you are reducing on the construction on new land, but again, uh, if someone who stays in Entebbe and works in a town, then when there's an apartment, he can stay in town and work from town. Then there you are remote, uh, reducing the number of vehicles on Entebbe Road. Mm. Yeah, so mixed use construction is also a technique we are using. Then also, this is when we are designing, we design making sure that the buildings don't demand too much power, like ventilation. We try to do natural ventilation, even natural lighting, yes. and very many other technologies. 
uh, equipment that consume very little power and others. Mm. Yeah, so engineering wise, we are taking a role, a leading role in sustainable development. Before we go on the commercial break, let's look at what's happening in the world of the real estate sector. China's central bank cut a key mortgage rate in an effort to support the ailing property market and the broader economy. The People's Bank of China lowered the five-year loan rate by a quarter of a percentage point to 3.95% on Tuesday. The central bank last cut the rate in June last year. It's used by financial institutions as a benchmark for mortgage loans. The latest rate reduction is seen as an effort to reverse the prolonged slump in China's real estate industry, which is dragging on the broader economy. China's consumer price index has fallen four straight months as domestic demand stagnates. 